Is Koharu the best healer in the game? Yes. Well, at least the best striker healer. Hey guys, welcome on in. Curios here. And today we're going to review Koharu. I can't wait. I've been waiting for this. So we're going to do the things that we normally do. But before we get started, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. It does help me out a ton. Come join us in the Discord. Links are down below. Tap, tap, you name it. Let's go. All right, yes, Koharu, let's get started. Let's start off with what she is. She's a backline healer with a sniper rifle. Let's look at her gear real quick. She has hat, band, and necklace. I do, I mean, band's typical. Necklace, good. Hat? That doesn't make sense to me. I really wish she had boots, but I understand that they don't put boots on backliners. I get it. Affinity, let's look at that. Her affinity doesn't matter. It really doesn't. She has a, a negative urban area she has a positive outdoor area and then she has a neutral indoor area but since you're really using her for healing affinity doesn't affect healing the only thing it really affects there is going to affect her block rate when she's hiding behind cover which is good for which could hurt a little bit for some of the raids coming up so i see that but for healing wise it doesn't matter too much let's look at her character stats attack for a sniper rifle, pretty low for a sniper rifle, but we're not using her for attack uh, typically or for damage. We're using her for healing. Uh, evasion, pretty low for sniper, uh, pretty low, but she is a sniper rifle, so that's to be expected. Decent amount of HP, nothing to write home about. Uh, a decent amount of crit rate and stuff like that, but none of these stats are really to write home about. And this is what's really great about her is that she's very budget. And now let's talk about her bread and butter. butter. <laughs> That was hard to say. All right, let's take two. Bread and butter. It's her EX skill. Heals in an area for up to 192% of healing. And then for enemies does 431% damage, but you really won't use that, like I said. Three cost. Wonderful. Amazing. Um, so there is healers that heal a little bit harder than she does, but for a three cast striker healer, I'll take that all day. I'll take that all day. Now her secondary skill or her normal skill is also amazing her allies are less than 50 percent heal for 153 percent of healing on this 20 second cooldown that's pretty pretty good she gets a passive where she increases attack that's good um this would probably be the last one i level and then for her sub skill she does every 30 seconds increases her healing by 41 percent for a duration of 20 seconds really good really good so now if you time your heal really good you can um yeah, you can get some more heal through, but so look at her EX skill real quick. What I really like about it is that you really don't need to max her out. Now you should when you're pushing extremes and stuff like that. But in the beginning, I know we're stretched for resources and I have another video talking about this, but her three cost is probably a good breakdown, right? 147%. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. A uh, unique weapon, the Justice Black, an adorable little snail on it. Brings her outdoor affinity to uh, double S. Okay. I mean... Uh, I guess, but hero, which is the one that you really want to bring her for is uh, you know, you're going to bring her for a lot of raids. We'll talk about that, but is in urban and indoors. So that doesn't really excite me too much and increases attack further. What I like about this is that you don't actually have to go after this unique weapon, go after some other unique weapons instead. So she is, she is just in a great spot. Let's see how she does in the raids. Spoiler alert. She can be used pretty much everywhere. But let's take a look. All right, let's talk about raids real quick. Now, her top raid is Hero Ninimus. I can't think of a, a single EX raid without her. I'm sure it's possible at some point down the line. The other one team extreme mode that she's actually really good at is also Shirokuru. When you have to bring uh, mainly like Hibiki and Kotama and you can't bring another healer in there. where you are just going to soak the damage. The other two raids she's pretty good in if you're two teaming in extreme. I don't know about it, but one team, but a lot of us are going to be two teaming for a while, is going to be Kitan and Cheese. She's going to get a lot of distance there. Now, we'll break Hieronymus down in details for abilities and what to watch out for, but really, you can see here, right? She needs to heal this Lantern and her team at the same time. This is why you typically bring two healers into this fight and why she's really, really good. Now, looking at her affinities for Hieronymus, Hieronymus is indoors and urban. 
Now, unfortunately, her affinities are just not that good. But once again, it doesn't really affect her healing. Just her block rate is a neutral indoors and then a bad urban. Now, uh, once again, we have Shiro Kuru, which she's actually pretty good at for extreme. I don't have any footage on that right now, but she has the same affinities as Hieronymus. So no big shocker there. Now, quickly just talking about the other two. Now, she does have a positive affinity outdoors. So I think the devs really wanted her to be useful in a little bit of Binna for AoE healing. And then also for Cheese for AoE healing. But as teams have broken out and have gone leveled up in the Japanese release, it, it's proven that she isn't really needed for a one-team clear for these fights. But once again, she is good for Kaiten, and Kaiten is located outdoors. But once again, affinity doesn't matter too much. Okay, guys, let's talk about quickly where else she could be used. And the TLDR is she could be used everywhere. Because remember, since she's really not attacking, the, the armor synergy does not matter, right? Because armor synergy only matters on attack, not on receiving damage or on healing or any on, uh, on that goodness. So she's going to be really good in campaign. She could help you anywhere in campaign, whether it's a penetration team, uh, a, a mystic team, or even your explosive teams, right? She can help you out with that the the bounties right and she can help you out with all these different bounties so you can juggle the the, um, the schools you need to get in there two she actually can be used a little bit on base defense if you're still struggling with that for some additional healing um i still think serena and a few others might be a, a little bit better but once again she can be used everywhere and that's what makes her really great she's not really used unfortunately in pvp or not in pvp i've seen so far Maybe when we get outdoors, it'd be a little bit more, but outdoors, your characters are usually spread out a little too far. So um, I wouldn't give her a high rating on PVP. All right, so that brings us to our final rating. Once again, always pull the characters that you really enjoy. This might not be one of them. I would hope it's one of them. I hope it's one of them. Anyways, but I digress. Now onto the final rating. Koharu gets a solid 5 out of 5. Uh, kind of cheated a bit here. Should have been a 4.5 out of 5 considering she's not used in PvP. But since she's really, really important and really, really good, I'm just saying screw the rules. She gets a 5 out of 5 in my book. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Thank you so much for hanging out. Once again, subscribe, like, all that goodness. I'm going to put the live 2D right at the end here, so feel free to check that out. It may be translated or not, depending on how much time I have. So, but it's still adorable. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.